Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for participating in our little head talk session seven. Uh, today, we have the honor to have with us uh, Caroline Hoagland. Please correct me if I mispronounce it. Uh, perfect. So, uh, she is the president of the European Federation of Parents and Carers at Home and also of the Harrow Association in uh, Sweden. So uh, before she starts, uh, if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat uh, so I can read them. Or otherwise, if you want to ask them directly, uh, you can turn on your cam. And then after the presentation that it's approximately last 15 minutes, you can ask them directly. So thank you, uh, President, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. So hello, hello everyone, can everyone hear me okay? Is it okay? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So my name is Caroline Hoagland and I'm from Stockholm, Sweden, where I live with my little family of my husband and our three children. And aside from taking care of my kids, which is still my main priority, I am the president of two organizations, as uh, Evan already told you. Uh, and both of these organizations are working for parents and children. So FIFAF, which stands for European Federation of Parents and Carers at Home, uh, work for the recognition and value of unpaid caregiving work. And HARO, which is a Swedish organization, has been working for 40 years now to promote the freedom of choice regarding childcare and to be a voice for stay-at-home parents. So becoming a mother and all the experiences that brought me is what led me to these two organizations. And little could I have known as a shy child and teenager and even young adult with a fear of standing out and being heard that I would do just that years later. Uh, in writing and in speaking worldwide through my engagement. So parenthood and all experiences in life combined have been excellent schooling and it is a ride I'm still on and so are you with experiences you have in your life. Uh, so today I want to give you three life lessons uh, that I have learned over the course of my 35 years. And I hope, it is my hope, that it will be beneficial to you as it has been for me. So, so think about this for a moment. I do not know who, who will listen to this talk, um, really, but uh, I know there might be some students and uh, some young professionals. So think about this for a moment. Do, do you know exactly what you want to do with your life or what you want to work with? Uh, and if you don't, how does that make you feel? You see, for me, I had no idea. I mean, I had some interest and ideas, but it was not clear in my mind at all. So before I went to school and university, I had a few different jobs. And then I ended up in the States studying for a little while, uh, taking all kinds of, in my opinion, fun classes like um, interior design, nutrition, dance, and mind and body health. And later back in Sweden, I landed on studying health and massage and well-being. And after which I started my own company, working with that well-being and physical health until my first, our first child, Isaac, was born. And now 11 years later, I've changed my uh, field of study slightly yet again uh, to psychological health instead of physical health. So as you can see, my life has been anything but a straight arrow when it comes to education and working, and I'm still figuring it out. But today, looking back, I can see that I've learned something from everything that I've done in my life, um, however diverse it might seem. Um, so let me give you some examples. So, so after high school, I got a job at a jewelry shop at the mall. And that might not seem super exciting. And uh, it was a job to earn money. And because of that, working there could have looked like, you know, go to work, work, and then go home and be done with it, uh, which would have been fine, but it would have bored me to death. So I started to learn more about the products, about gems and diamonds, clarity color cut, 
uh, the properties of gold and silver. And did you know how interesting it is? Uh, and as a bonus, it got to be so much more fun to work there. And everything, whatever it is, can be interesting when you learn more about it. Other jobs I, have given me experiences later in life that I couldn't have known back then. And that was the case for me when I worked as a substitute teacher or a carer in preschool a long time ago. And it was really valuable for me to see the environment, to see what care the children got and sometimes didn't get. And it's been a really good um, experience for me to have in my engagement in HARO and also as a mother. So what do you work with? Maybe you, you're a student and you have a part-time job in an ice cream shop. Well then learn the ingredients. What makes really good ice cream? What is the best way to scoop it and how to make customers happy? Or maybe you have a monotonous factory job. Well, um, then see if you can dance to work or I'm just a kid in that area, you know, see if you can make it a game do it as fast as you can or in a special beat or simply just make sure that they can trust you completely and do your best and it will develop you as a person. So every job is an opportunity. Learn as much as you can about it. Of course, I don't think everything is fun, but it has helped me to change my mindset, uh, even in motherhood, actually. And it is a mindset I, that I think can be useful throughout life. And that is my lesson number one. And I have this little piece of jewelry, this ring, that will represent this lesson. And I will put it on so you can see it. So whatever you do, make the most out of it. Be interested and learn. It is part of your lifelong learning and journey of education. And it has blown me away of the change it can make in your life. So... Lesson number two, this will represent uh, lesson number two. And this lesson started 11 years ago for me. Uh, that's when my son was born. This is actually my daughter, but I couldn't find a photo of him. <laughs> uh, but becoming a mother hasn't just taught me things. It has changed me completely. Now I realize becoming a parent might not be something you can choose, but if you can prioritize it, value it and Please let it change you. So um, it is part of your lifelong education and you will come up stronger and more capable because of it. A couple of years ago, I was in Berlin at a conference and a woman spoke and she mentioned a study where they had looked at what skills parents uh, improve or acquire from um, being a parent that can be useful in work life and as leaders later in life. So the skills were such as flexibility, empathy, and patience, and lots more, of course. And she got my attention because that resonated so well with me. I knew how much becoming a mother had changed me, and I thought how wonderful and empowering it would be if parents knew how, of course, first and foremost, how valuable they are for their children, but also how developing parenthood really is for you as a person. Because you see in Sweden, staying at home with your children um, longer than the norm of about a year is difficult both financially but also socially. And to add to that, Sweden changed the name from daycare to preschool in 1998, which has affected the view of institutionalized um, care in many ways. For example, that many parents are now afraid that their children will fall behind if not put in preschool. And we have left our children in the care of others for so many years now. So the norm is laid out and adhered to like the only option. So you can imagine how torn I felt as a first time mother, especially when most around me started putting their children in preschool. And even though I wanted and had intended to stay home with him a little while longer, I felt alone and overwhelmed. Was I really going to be able to care for him by myself? Would he miss out? Uh, would someone else care for him better as society told me? And because of this, I eventually did put him in a small daycare a little earlier than I had intended to. And a lot of emotions and thoughts were going through my mind during this period. I did not want to just follow and be okay with this norm. I wanted to find out what was good for 
for us, for him, and make our own choice, and uh, regardless of what that would be. And I think many parents, including myself, have gone against our instincts to adapt to the modern society of a one choice, one size fit all view that does not fit or benefit every parent or every child. And I wanted intensely to do something about it and maybe I had to stand out. So I want to encourage you who potentially will work with families or if you already do, to empower parents and value them. They have an incredibly important job to do as parents. And we lose so much as societies when parental confidence and trust is lost. So somewhere along this time is when my sister-in-law told me about HARO. And to know that there was a whole organization that stood up for and empowered parents who wish to care for their small children at home uh, was a relief in the midst of the strong norms of the Swedish society. I immediately became a member and their work felt so important. So I wanted to be part of it. So I got more and more engaged and uh, accepted responsibilities and eventually joined the board. And now here I am, uh, president of their very same organization that supported me in those early years of parenthood. And that brings me to lesson three. And this will have to be the symbol for that. Uh, this is Haro's magazines. So get involved in an organization. For me, getting involved in HARO has given me opportunities that I most likely would have never experienced otherwise. To mention a few things this ride has taken me on, I first and foremost have to mention all the wonderful, engaged, and passionate, and driven people that I met that have enriched my life and inspired me. Um, but I've attended numerous conferences as a speaker um, and as a participant. Networking, uh, that used to intimidate me to, you know, go and meet and approach new people. But now it's one of my favorite things. I love to meet new people and to hear about their story. Coming to the UN and participating and speaking at events there has been a real treat. And surely something I wouldn't have experienced without my engagement in civil society work. Remember how I told you in the beginning how I had a fear of standing out, uh, standing out and standing up and being heard. Uh, well, I still think it's uncomfortable, but I love how I've been able through this work to develop that and continuously stretch myself. And I've surprisingly even been able to put my designer's heart to the test by doing the layout of Horace magazine. I remember the headache of the first number. I had no idea if I was even going to make it. I had never done it before. I seriously had a headache for like two weeks, uh, but I made it fortunately, and I've been doing this for a couple of years now. So getting involved in an organization will without a doubt give you new experiences and inputs. It might even, as it did for me, give you a new passion or a direction to the question of what you want to do with your life. So find an organization that works with something that interests you. Join them, uh, get involved, and um, yeah. So to sum up, my three life lessons that I want to leave with you are to see life as a journey of education, where every job, even the one at the jewelry store, um, formal education, parenthood, and experiences are part of your process of lifelong learning. So whatever job you have, do your best, learn, and be interested if you have the pleasure of ever becoming a parent. Don't be afraid, be afraid of letting it change you. See parenthood as part of your schooling and prioritize it. You will not regret it. And if you're working with families, work hard to ensure that parents have choices to provide the care that their child needs and to empower them in their most valuable job as parents. And lastly, get involved in an organization. It will definitely lead you to new experiences, people and places. Don't wait for someone to ask you, get involved. If you don't know quite yet what you're, what you're, where you're going, be patient. What you're doing now is taking you there. You will find your way if you keep an open mind and make use of every opportunity that um, comes your way. So thank you for listening. All right. Thank you so much, President Holen, for sharing with us your personal experiences and the goals you achieved. 
So uh, there are some questions and I would like to start first. So considering our world, our society, that is basically like the most of the primary uh, like positions in association and society are like mostly limited to men. How can women have both a professional and also a personal life, like raising their children and sharing also the duties with eventually their husband, because I think that Sweden has made a lot of progress in that regard. That's a very good question and something we will actually bring up. We'll, we'll, we'll have an event at the Commission on the Status of Women. Uh, so we will have a speaker that will speak uh, concerning that, how you can participate in society and how we can engage women uh, who maybe want to be at home with their kids for a little while. Uh, and yeah, it's very true that in Sweden, we share a lot, like both women and men uh, of the care work. Uh, but yeah, um, it's a good question. And I just, I can see that for myself, uh, just reaching out, you know, you can, uh, I, I took a lot of courses when my kids were small at home, like uh, at nighttime, you know, and, and you can get involved in an organization. Yes, you may be, if you don't want to, of course, uh, will not have like a, the president of a company I don't know <laughs> uh, in the early years of the kids with your kids but you can do it later you just don't have to do everything at the same time but I think it's important that stay-at-home parents um, get involved in the debate and and yeah get engaged in whatever organization or whatever you think is important for you and I think that's a way to get involved during those years is that an answer to your question? Yeah, definitely okay. does. Thank you. So there is another question that asks, what can be done according to you to reassure those working couples who want children but are scared because of fear of the future, lack of confidence? I mean, this can apply to all of us because of the current pandemic situation where we do not have like a stable job or like an income that may allows even couples. So even two people working and living together and splitting their expenses. So how, what can we do to like give a sort of relief to these people? Hmm. Yeah, that's a hard question. But I, when I read your question, um, the one who wrote this is, I get a feeling that you want to, uh, I mean, yes, you need the economy and all of that, but uh, for this question, it sounds a little bit like it's more like a fear of the future, what's going to happen. It's a, we live in unstable societies, but also a lack of confidence. And I just, and that, that is actually one thing I'm passionate about that I feel that we have have to work on in Sweden uh, because we are we're not valuing parenthood and having children enough and when you know how important you are for this little child then I mean you will have the confidence and trust and just know that you are enough for that child so mm, I don't know maybe that's a, an answer to your question but uh, I hope we can, I mean, it is an unstable world, but I hope we uh, anyways could be, could have the confidence to do it and just have the confidence that we can do it as parents and we are the most important for our children. So, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks. I think we have another question. Do you wanna do it, Evan? uh yes it's uh yeah i think that the reply like met the answer and it explained also very well how to deal with the current situation like you also explained like taking some curses and that could potentially like give us uh, improve our skills uh either professionally or personally 
And so if I might ask you uh, like some courses that you would like suggest to use to take for like example, I am taking right now some communication courses um, about how to like properly tell to the other person what I want to communicate. So before you told us, I took some courses, probably and focus on that could help us and give us some more inspiration. Did you want me to elaborate or what was that, what you said? Last yeah. 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 Basically. Yeah. The curses that you told us you, you had. Yeah. Um, well, for me, it was like courses on like child development and attachment and things like that. And uh, Haro subsidized courses to parents um, to empower them and to help them. And so that's what got my interest because I actually felt I wasn't, I didn't have the confidence that I wanted to have. Uh, so that was the way for me to just get more um, knowledge and uh, um, yeah. And in whatever you do, get more knowledge and learn more than you will have more confidence. That's my way of life anyways. I don't know if that works for everybody, but um, so yeah, I think it's great to take courses of commu communication. I would like to do that as well. And I think we should like continue throughout life to learn more stuff like that. Yeah, um, I see Victor Molnar has a question as well. Do you want me to, or? Yeah, all right. So uh, as someone who work with young parents and families, how can we reassure them? Especially after they continuously worry that they feel like a failure as a parent for not spending enough time with their child. Mm. Um, I have a favorite author and she says, uh, and she, uh, it's Erica Komisar and she's a parent guidance expert and uh, she's an author as well. And she, she talks about prioritizing. So if we could get to parents that they, they should prioritize being with their children the time, I mean, even if they can't be home with their children, so the time that they do have with their children, prioritize that time and focus on, on their kids uh, then. So I think that's important uh, to like use that word. And um, uh, how can we reassure them? And also, yeah, I I really feel for the message to to get the, to get the message out that because I feel that in Sweden we have talked so much about preschool and how much you learn there and that's where your kids can learn stuff as if you can't learn with a parent, uh, which obviously you can and I think that message really has to come out and also the what children need like child development. Uh, Okay, so children need a safe attachment, uh, interaction, you know, to talk uh, with their parent um, and uh, language rich experiences. So that, that is also, but it can sound so, so hard and so, you know, big and pretty, but really it is to talk to your child, what you're doing, what is going on around you, um, going to the store, just continuous, continuous interaction. And that is enough. And that is something we have to, um, a message we need to bring to our parents, I think, to, to make them feel more confident and know that they are enough for their kids. Okay, thank you. So also, Mr. Oliver Yao, the president of FFIT has a question and yeah, there is some space present. So please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. And I like very much uh, what uh, Carolina has, has mentioned. And my, my question is, what experience do you believe that we should be proudly copy from Sweden in order to help other families to do what the, I, I may call it the miracles that you are performing in Sweden. What example do you believe you can share with us? 
sorry, I can't, I can't quite hear you. But what, what are the experiences from Sweden that you, that you should copy? Is that what you said? Exactly. Exactly. <sighs> hmm. Um. Well. Oh, it's a really hard question because currently I'm working, you know, trying to change some things in Sweden myself, not myself, but in our organization, you know, um, that I think uh, some unforeseen consequences of what we have done. We have a, a lot of things here that has been really good. I mean, gender equality and, and all of that. And I mean, providing daycare has been good as a widening of choices, but it has now become like the only socially acceptable choice. Um, ah, what should I say? Uh, but I mean, at the same time, you just have to go through phases and then like correct along the way. But I hope, I mean, it feels like uh, many are following Sweden's example. And I just hope that we will, that, you will see all the negative consequences that could, that can be foreseen uh, also when you like copy to your country. Um, but to provide, provide options, but still value the care at home, for example, to have a palette, palette of different options for parents to choose from so that they can give the care to their children that they need. Um, yeah, and I mean, parental leave is, is good. I know some um, countries are struggling that don't have anything at all, or like in the States, you have like six weeks or whatever. Uh, but so, I mean, that is that is a good thing. We, we, we have parental leave for about a year in Sweden. Yeah, maybe that. <laughs> All right. So uh, thank you so much, uh, President Holland, for your words for once again sharing with us the, your experiences that also me as a youth could help us, particularly on the job market. So I just want also to thank all the participants to take part in this little head talk. Uh, we want to let you know that this uh, conversation is recorded and we're going to share it uh, and then we're going to share with you the link. And yeah, thank you everybody for participating and we hope to see you soon in the next Little Health Talks. Thank you so much, everybody.